Dan Orlovsky, how you doing, sir? Thanks for the time today. I'm doing well. How are you guys? Uh, doing just fine. Let's go ahead and start with the uh, news of the day here in Miami, which obviously affects the Patriots too. Tua Tagovailoa um, diagnosed with another concussion. Uh, first of all, just your impressions of the way the Dolphins have handled all this, and uh, what does this mean for Tua's future and his career? Yeah, I mean, I, I, the Dolphins, I, it's, I think it's hard to find fault in it because of the new way that post what happened in their game versus Buffalo at home a couple months ago, you know, how the rules changed. And, you know, I guess to everyone's point or view that there was no visual symptom for Tua in the game. So I think it's hard to sit here and crush anybody over this because of the way the new rules are worded. Um, Super unfortunate for Tua, you know, but give him and Mike McDaniel a lot of credit that after it happened and he comes in and says, you know, I, I saw that Mike, you know, watched the tape and started asking Tua questions about his play, and he thought some of his answers were odd, and that's kind of what led to him seeing the doctor. So credit those guys for that. Uh, but it comes at a horrible time not only for Tua and his season and his future, but also the team and where they sit when it comes to their playoff push. And um, it, it's it's unfortunate because I think the world of the guy is, as a person and the player. Now, are, are we at a point now where we need to start talking about Tua's career and whether and how yeah. long he's got in this game? Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, we the, I, there's the reality. We were at that point when Tua left Alabama. I mean, I had conversations with people in the medical world, not me, and I know nothing that they said you get seven years out of Tua. That, that's what you're going to get because of the injuries that he suffered in college and mainly that hip one. So that was always a little bit of an asterisk or a, you know, a, a variable attached to Tua. And now third concussion in a matter of a short period of time, yeah, you're having, you know, and I, I said this this past week, and I didn't even know it was the concussion, but I said the fourth quarter has to give you a pause if it's a Dolphins organization because of how much of a collapse it was. Now you're talking, well, was that collapse associated with or because of another head injury? And here's the reality. And I think this is, like, candidly, this is going to have ramifications for Tua and his future. Does he want to keep playing football? Does his wife and his family want him to keep playing football? Do the Dolphins feel comfortable investing whatever amount of money for a quarterback that does have that? And, again, I hate saying that because I love the guy and the player. And the third thing, and this is a reality too, is I think it's going to impact organizations when it comes to the, the, the draft recruitment mm-hmm. of that position because we are treating, as we should, head injuries so um, – sensitive right now that are you going to draft a quarterback that is such a dynamic run threat when a shot to the head to him or a shot that looks like a head uh, to the head to him has way more impact on your football team than it does oh my wide receiver took a shot to the head that's just the truth because the quarterback obviously every single play of his performance matters we're talking with Dan Orlovsky here on the Harbor One Hotline. Uh, Dan, the Patriots, I know that game was four days ago, but I saw you tweeting about the first two uh, plays on third down, and those were the first two pass attempts that Mac had in the in the game because it was run, run, pass yeah. both times. And uh, they were both really brutal to watch. Um, those are the plays that they rehearse, right? I mean, these are walkthrough <laughs> plays that we're talking about here, and they looked about as, as uh, bungled as I've ever seen. I mean, we're really far into the season for a team to start off on offense like that, aren't we? It's awful, and it, it's unacceptable. It's a complete, it's a complete um, kind of negative connotation or negative vantage point for everybody associated with that offense. So, Everybody knows how the game week goes preparation-wise. On Wednesdays, most teams put in, like, what their base game plan is going to be. And then they'll start to maybe get ahead a little bit of third down red zone. And on Thursday, most teams put in that third down and red zone package. They're very specific. They're very game plan oriented. They're very, hey, guys, the difference of the game isn't going to be this first and 10 call in the second quarter, but it's going to be this third down call 
that's third and three or third and four. So a lot of times you really focus in on those situational football calls, game plan wise, the red zone and the third down. So for that third down, which should be something you get, you emphasize everything, right? But a lot of the, you, you don't ha- spend a ton of time in the week calling your base first and 10 play in practice because you should have banked thousands of reps on that stuff. But those third down calls are the ones you sit there and go, when can we call that again in practice versus this look? And get, give our quarterback, give our players all those different looks. So the fact that those two first third down plays look the way they look, that tells me, well, there must have been either a lack of practice time with them, a lack of different looks that you practiced against, a lack of preparation, or a lot of lack of understanding of everybody's roles. Do they ask questions about what? I mean, it's just, it was, it, it looks awful. The quarterback gets the blame. It's another kind of series of plays when you sit there and go, this is an abject disaster from top to bottom. Well, you know what, Dan? I've watched that team all throughout training camp, and I can tell you the same things that they are struggling with right now are the sure. same things that they were struggling with back then. It has been absolutely maddening to continue to watch them continually messing up the same things. Now, with Mac Jones, I mean, obviously it wasn't all perfect from just an offensive execution standpoint and, and some of the throws that he had, but what did you see from him in the second half do you see him start to settle down and prove that he can outplay some of that? Mac is so difficult to talk about right now. You know, like, I'm just looking at my notes, guys, <laughs> from this game. Um, Q- QB made some really nice long throws in the second half. First quarter, awful offense. First quarter, awful offense. Second quarter, I asked, why didn't he throw a post on a deep crosser? Mm, Third yep. quarter, Thornton drops a big, deep ball. Fourth quarter, awful offensive plan. Fourth quarter, awful offensive plan. So it's really hard. And, and everyone knows I think highly of Mac. Um, I just think it's really hard to evaluate or gauge what did Mac do well this year? What didn't he do well? Is he a good player? Is he, I believe he's a very good player. And I believe he could be a quarterback that you win a lot of games with in this league. Um, but it's so hard to – give a fair assessment on what he has been put in this year and not think, my goodness, it's because of all the pieces around him have been such a disaster. Real, real quick, you mentioned why didn't he throw the post on, uh, on, on a deep cross. Are you talking about the, the play action where uh, yeah. I think it was Tyquan Thornton went deep and he threw it to Myers and he was a little late on the throw? So what are you seeing yeah. on that play from your vantage point? Yeah, I mean, so that that's a traditional football concept where you're – you got a big post and a deep cross, and it versus middle field closed defense. So there's right. one safety in the middle field, and the read often is, what does that safety do? Stay back, throw the crosser down to a check down. If he gets aggressive, you want to launch that post at about 40 to 44 yards down the hash. You got to see the backside corner. That's football 201, 301 stuff. But um, it looked like Mac just had kind of canceled out the post pre-snap. I'm not throwing it no matter what because the safety – drives the crosser. That ball should get thrown to the post. And um, without being in that meeting room, if I was in that meeting room, the first question I would ask Matt is, what did you see? And why didn't you throw the post? And because he's the guy out there, you know, calling the shots, pulling the trigger, seeing it. So I'd want to hear from him why he didn't throw that post. My um, experienced guess is he was never throwing that post. Yeah, that's what it seems like, because it feels like they use Tyquan Thornton a lot on just go run down the field and clear things off. Yeah, that ball should get thrown. Um, Dan, what would you think of Mac Jones' hit on Eli Apple? It's obviously getting a lot of attention, and he's starting to get a reputation here. Do you think it's deserved? Um, I mean, perception is reality, you know, and and I don't know Mac, um, but you can't constantly have plays that look a certain way and think that people are not going to start to um, form an opinion on what type of person and or player you are in those moments. Um, I like that Mac lives on the edge. He has to, to be successful. He has to be one of those ultra competitive guys. Um, I can't judge his character and I can't judge his intent, but I can tell you that 
you know, you, you have to be aware of what how some things look. And um, if you're okay with it or you don't care, then that's fine. But if, if that's an important thing to you of what people think about you as a person when it comes to that stuff, then he gets something that he's going to have to start paying attention a little to a, a little bit more to for sure. All right. Uh, before we let you go here, Dan, obviously we just heard the breaking news about uh, Jared Stidham now being the starter, Derek Carr getting benched out there in Las Vegas. Do you think that that's going to clear up some space for Tom Brady to make a move in the off season? Do you see this as the beginning of a, uh, another quarterback carousel? Yeah, there's going to be some, some solid names out there. You know, I'm, I'm shocked by the Raiders because mathematically they're still in this, right? To, to bench him is crazy to me, and I believe it's the start of moving on from him. Um, and if you're a team like the New York Jets, you're like, thank God, please, because that's the guy that you should go get if you're the Jets. Yeah, I think Brady could be on the uh, – you know, because I, I don't think if Brady plays, he stays in Tampa. So Brady could be on the market. Derek Carr – I mean, Derek Carr, since he's coming to the NFL, has had the 32nd-ranked defense. He's had the worst defense in football since he was a Raider. He's never had a defense that was in the top 20 in the NFL. So you're talking about a dude that you could win a ton of games with. Obviously, Tom can play at a high level still. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. So there's going to be some teams sitting there going, there's some good players available that we can, you know, kind of plug and play at that most important position. All right. We'll leave it right there then. Dan Orlovsky, great to talk with you. Thanks for the time. Appreciate you. Thanks, guys.